People of Reddit, what stupid rule at your work school backfired beautifully? Management decided that lines of code written per week was a good metric for determining software engineer productivity. You want a 3 line function stretched out into 50 lines? I'm your captain. I was working as a medical assistant at a private practice medical clinic. Our clinic manager wouldn't allow the new receptionist to drive to the bank to deposit cash. Made her walk carrying the money bag so that she couldn't drive away with the money. Bizarre. I know. That went on for a few weeks. Then the receptionist was mugged and over $1000 in cash was stolen. She was allowed to drive after that. My boss started putting all staff required to start 15 minutes earlier than indicated on the roster. I started keeping track of my unpaid overtime and stung her for 3 paid days off. That's not required anymore. I worked on this company that had mandatory 1 hour lunch breaks. Since we ate on the premises. Our lunch break was often 15 minutes or so. We tried negotiating having shorter lunch breaks so we could leave earlier and beat traffic. Next day an email was sent from the own stating the fixed work and break hours for the whole team. And they were to be followed no exceptions. Cool. Next week. A big client called about halfway through our lunch. And nobody moved. It rang and rang until said owner took the call. Talk to them. And immediately came to scold us. Sorry. Boss. As per your rules. We are off until 1pm. No exceptions. A couple of weeks later. We did some work on site for the same client. They were. To be honest. One of the coolest clients I ever had in my life. They took us out to lunch. And while talking we ended up relaying the owner's rule. They had a big chuckle over it. And while the project lasted. They made a point to always call while we were at lunch break just to annoy owner. Not mine. But an old roommate of mine was a senior developer for a small company. It was an open secret that one of the other senior devs. A guy who had been there since the beginning. Would sometimes spend time looking at plastic surgery photos. Before after shots. Photos of active procedures. Etc. He did it enough that people would poke fun at him about it. But he didn't seem embarrassed about it. And it wasn't harming anyone. Well. One day a project manager said something to the CEO about this guy's ongoing plastic surgery obsession. And the CEO flipped. He said that. Going forward. No one was allowed to use their work computers to access external websites at all. Anyone who's ever been a developer knows that half the job is googling stuff. So this policy pretty much halted productivity in its tracks. It only lasted a day before the CEO retracted the rule. But let everyone know that their browser history would be monitored going forward. After that. No one really changed their behavior. They just started remotely accessing their home computers to browse instead. Back in the early zeros. My high school implemented a policy that you had to wear your ID tag at all times. If you didn't have it on. You were sent home. So many students lost their ID tag to go grab food or skip a class. We were the only graduating class to wear them all 4 years. The policy ended soon after. I worked at Starbucks for like 5 plus years before and during undergrad and at one point our district manager thought it was a good idea to implement a just say yes policy. Where we literally weren't allowed to tell the customer no. Lasted for about 3 months and in that 3 months our unaccounted product and waste went up over 300% because when the post didn't have a way to punch in a customer request we had to just do it anyways. We also got complaints from stores and surrounding districts because they had angry customers who were requesting things that were against local food service code. And told them that we did it for them at our store. I knew exactly how that policy was going to play out and I just laughed every time management was freaking out about the problems it was causing. Give me all the money in the cash register and make me a free iced coffee. My spouse's workplace realized they didn't have a policy about sending SSL images or jokes as part of their email acceptable use policy. So they added it. Except they made it a firing offense to send or receive SSL content. I think the intent was to stop people from subscribing to such content. 
They also said that your access would be immediately revoked until a determination was made. So someone got fired for something else and decided to send their whole management chain a graphically SZL image. Then report it using the anonymous tip line. IT got the report. Concluded they did indeed receive SZL content. And did as required so suspended all the involved email accounts. Including the SVPs. The dealership I was working at decided they wanted to save money by not having the cleaning crew come in after hours. People started leaving the dealership to go home to go to the bathroom because they were disgusting. I lived pretty far away so I would just go use the GM's private bathroom. The bottom floor of my secondary school was a square that had corridor all the way around. After some incident where a kid got knocked over. They implemented a one way system. Unfortunately. They were very strict on enforcing it. If you accidentally walked past your class. You couldn't just turn around. They seemed very proud of their new rule. Until everyone started showing up late for class because they had to do extra laps of the bottom floor. Couldn't buy drinks at lunch with cash money. Had to buy some voucher. They were just cheaply made laminated pieces of paper. This was 2001. I was 13 and bored. Scanned the vouchers and printed them out on paper that kinda matched the color of the vouchers. And laminated them myself. They were horrible made and not even the right color on the backside. Also crudely cut out. I made about a hundred of them have passed them out after I tried paying with them for myself and encountered no problems. Made some new friends and upped production. Took them about 3 weeks to find out but by then the fakes ones had intermingled with the real ones and had already been resold to students via the student office. About half of the vouchers sold were fakes. Drinks were cash only from then on. They had no choice to accept the fakes one for a little while longer though. As they had sold and charged for some of them. A long while back. But my school banned the color pink because a bunch of students were wearing it one October and they thought it was a gang thing. It was for breast cancer awareness month. The rule didn't go well for them. A place I used to work had a rule that executive level staff needed to be contactable when on leave. So they had a section on the leave form for the address of where you'd be staying and a contact number. Some knuckle shuffler in HR decided it applied to all staff and the shenanigans began. People would put down the address and phone number of SX shops. Sports grounds. Medical clinics. I gave the latitude and longitude of the place I was going camping and the UHF frequency channel my radio would be tuned to. Not sure if this applies. But I worked at a restaurant that started doing Thursday night trivia in hopes of more traffic. The prize for the winner was their ticket would get calmed. One guy asked to have everyone in the restaurant s food put on his ticket. And then won. They stopped doing trivia night. My HS had a smoking in the bathroom problem and to solve it. Rather than having a teacher outside the restrooms during a whole time. They locked all the bathrooms except one. This made it so you had to wait in a stupid long line with 1200 other students trying to use 3 stalls for each gender in the 10 minute between classes. During class time they had the assistant principal sit outside the one open bathroom and they would check your ID and sign you in and out and only one student in at a time. 1. Major health code violation 2. Kids would be holding it all day. 3. Girls on their cycle needed the restroom and would often have to get a pass from class to go use the restroom bc the lines were too long during breaks. 4. Smokers still smoked in the gym locker rooms during changing time. This rule didn't solve anything but made it very unhygienic and rather annoying to just use the restroom. In chemistry class we had plastic bottles of distilled water which could be squeezed to produce a small jet of water. We used to spray one another's crotches to make it look like you'd peed yourself. To counter this. Our teacher introduced a punishment to anyone caught spraying or having been sprayed. Hence. If you could spray someone and get away with it they would have wet trousers and have to write excerpts from a Martin Luther King speech. Needless to say the punishment for being sprayed was quickly abolished. To make moving between classes more efficient. They had designated up and down stairways. 
but they didn't take into account that the stairs were located at the ends of the very long corridors. Which meant it was impossible to get to your next class on time. Because of this. No one bothered trying to get to class on time and just blamed the stairway rule. Late 80s high school rule was no shorts. Classmate came for an exam with basketball shorts on that were below her knees. Teacher made her go home to change. She came back in a micro mini skirt and wrote her exam. My high school principal was known for sending girls home to change if their bra straps were showing. In my sophomore year he tried to send one of my classmates home. But she was like. Nah. I've got to change of clothes. No need to send me home. So she went to the bathroom. Took her bra off. And made a show of putting it in her locker. The principal was p said, But couldn't do anything about it since she technically was following the dress code. It became a thing. Like. Hundreds of high school girls removing their bra at school or just showing up braless as a big ducky to the principal. Worked in a gym. The smith machine. Huge squad rack type thing. Wasn't bolted to the floor and rocked back and forth. I come on shift. See the problem. Mark it out of order and call the company in to fix it. Leave a note for the boss who takes the out of order sign off it. This cycle repeats abs every time I come on shift it's back in play. We get sued by a member who hurts his back on it. Solicitor comes in. Point him to where we leave notes for management about maintenance. They settle with member. Every shift. There's a quota we need to fulfill. And then. Even if you do fulfill it. You have to keep working until your 8 hours are up. Cue everyone speeding for 4 hours. Having a 3 hour lunch coffee break. Then slowly moving their ass for an hour. No rule about us taking necessary breaks if we're still capable of reaching the quota. Now we're allowed to stop once we're done. People who were caught wandering the halls or skipping classes were sent straight home. Similarly. When I was in high school. I once got suspended for ditching school too many days in a row. Back in 2011. A company I worked for had the bright idea to block all social networks because. You know. Employees should work instead of slacking off on Facebook. I could write volumes of books on the toxic culture in that place. But the owner president who lived in a different country and visited about once every few months was universally feared by everyone and a few days before his arrival the whole building went into panic mode. So a few weeks after the social network ban. His royal highness shows up. And five minutes later half of IT department is scrambling to his office. Apparently there was an issue with the Wi-Fi, Or at least that's what he figured since he couldn't log on to Facebook. It was fixed in seconds. A few years and three promotions later. I make a joke about it with him. Instead of a laugh. I get a confused look. Turns out he still thinks it was some internet problem since whoever decided to ban social networks didn't have the balls to tell him about it after the incident. The grocery store I work at is now required to charge 5 cents for plastic bags. Because of this we have a lot of customers requesting paper bags. Since our paper bags suck us we typically double bag so they don't rip. Well one day the store manager sees a cashier doubling paper bags and yells at them because paper bags are more expensive and we can't afford to double bag them. So now we have a new rule you can't double paper bags unless they're really heavy. Fast forward a couple weeks. And my bagger is using single paper bags. Right as the store manager walks by the bagger picks up one of the bags that wasn't even that heavy and it rips right open. Right in front of the manager. At my old school you could get suspended for most minor infractions. This included smoking. However if you were a witness to other people smoking then you would get suspended along with them. So this ended up with everyone constantly working together to hide the smokers at all cost otherwise just about everyone would be suspended. Your school just wanted to teach everyone how to be better liars while also not having to deal with the smokers. Required every employee to use electronic time clocks to punch in out for work including lunch. Punching in late or leaving early would cause your pay to be docked and getting a discipline letter. Multiple people wanted to sabotage the clocks, cut the cords. ETC, but wiser heads prevailed. 
Everyone arrived several minutes early and left late. Every single day. To avoid getting into trouble. Unfortunately. This created an impeachable evidence of hours worked. The employer had to pay out thousands of dollars in overtime the first month. The clocks disappeared exactly 5 weeks after they were installed with no notification. I went to a strict Catholic school with uniforms. The kids in 4th 8th grade had to wear belts until we got a new principal who made it mandatory for all the kids in the school to wear belts. Many bathroom accidents from kindergartners. First and second graders later, and complaints from parents. Of course, the principal rescinded her addition to the dress code. More recently. This principal was fired for embezzling money from the school. I bet she also owned the only belt store in town. I would say zero tolerance. Before that kids would get in fights and one. Maybe both get suspended. Today. Kids get sent to the hospital because what's the point of going easy when you can best the shti out of a kid and have the same results? I had this happen. First fight in high school. I got into an argument with another kid. Walked away and was attacked from behind. Fought him off. Tried to walk away again. Was attacked from behind again. Principal told me I was suspended and asked what I should have done differently. He was shocked when I responded with. Well I guess I shouldn't have stopped hitting him. I mean duck. Walking away sure as hell didn't work. Back in 2014 our HR made a rule people couldn't go to other buildings. We had three buildings within a block of each other. All three had shipping areas and the warehouse employees had to go to each building to work. We were told to stay at one building. I mentioned we ship out of all three who is going to do the work. The genius said oh it'll be taken care of. Next day $500 k shipment didn't go out. The following day we have a meeting. Why didn't you ship this? Uh, two days ago we were told to stay in our building and someone would take care of it. The rule was quickly changed. No cell phones while on duty or instant dismissal. But now I frequently use my personal for work purposes and receive calls all throughout the day from superiors. They tried to fight the age of technology. Telework was deemed unattainable for most fed jobs much to employees dismay. Then covered it. Now it's all portable. Good luck to the government if they try to revert back to no telework. There was a guy on our team that was great. Very good at his job and very knowledgeable of the client. One day he was fired without warning. Turns out. He lived in Green Bay. Working remotely for our Minneapolis office. Everyone knew this and didn't care. Until HR found out. According to his boss they should have known in the first place but they're idiots. They didn't like that he wasn't in the office with the rest of his so they booted him for lying. Covid hit 2 months later and everyone was working remotely. Now they are hiring left and right. Including people from all over the country where we don't have offices. The irony wasn't lost on any of us. Edit. No. They aren't hiring anymore. Sorry for any false hope but please stop deeming me for the curious. It was an architectural firm looking for project leads and BIM managers. They stopped paying for extra hours because the only reason we needed extra hours was because we didn't organize our work properly. First people stopped working late. Some tasks were just impossible to perform within working hours. They ended up having to pay 4 Saturdays in a row, 150% of the income, to 2x times more people just to get back in schedule. <laughs> Students used to smoke in the toilets. So headmaster decided to lock all male toilets except one, 5 places in one. Now my school had around 700 students. Out of which around 300 were male. Everyone realized. That it became impossible to go to the toy cut quickly. Result? Some guys went in one and pizza defecated in all trash cans. A lot. No one found them. But all the other toilets open up immediately. Edit. For clarification. Not really a rule. But a change in policy. I used to work for a major beer distributor as a delivery driver. They decided to start using less glue in the packaging to save money. We're talking a few cents per package. As a result, 
breakage during distribution increased drastically causing them to eat a lot more damaged product. It caused such a large loss in profit that they quickly changed course. Edit. Since everyone is making guesses about which company I worked for. It was Anheuser-Busch. But it seems this is a common trial period for many beverage distributors. Zero tolerance ended shortly after a bully got thrown through a window because if I'm getting suspended for defending myself I'm gonna make it worth my while. Mad respect to the kid who tossed their bully through a window. When I was in elementary school. We had a stoplight in the cafeteria. It was green when we were the correct volume. Yellow when we were getting too loud. And red if we were way too loud. If it turned red. We lost our post lunch recess. Well whenever it turned red and we knew our recess was gone. This one is great. We had a no dating at work rule and the director started seeing someone and other people had their hidden relationships as well. That rule was nullified when the director announced his engagement and so about 6 other couples came out. We no longer have that rule. However people are to let the admin know of relationships now. 6 other couples? What is that? Grey's Anatomy or something? The private school where I used to work hired a second deputy head. Whose main function seemed to be creating rules and policies without stopping to consider whether they were really needed. Their PSD resistance was to give all the students little laminated cards advising them that if they were being harassed, for some reason. This person always pronounced the word as harassed, they were supposed to tell their tormentor I've had enough. I want you to stop doing saying that. The students. All in their mid to late teens. Reacted predictably. Most of the cards were soon spotted floating in the river that ran through the village where the school was located. And the phrase I've had enough. I want you to stop doing saying that was used frequently by students to whichever member of staff asked them to comb their hair make their bed settle down and work. I do remember asking one of the school's star rugby players whether the phrase had ever been used the way it had been intended. And his response was. Yes. When COVID started our boss demanded that our entire team sit in on group zoom calls. Even if the topics on the agenda didn't have anything to do with their roles. She felt it would build team unity. Productivity dropped. Negative Google reviews came in. Staff became more stressed. When she demanded answers on the next Zoom call one of my co-workers bluntly said well. I would reply to this woman's voicemail. But I'm stuck on this Zoom call. No more backpacks or bags. Teachers were mad when you didn't have any supplies. What were we supposed to do stuff at all in our shirts or pants? Also as a girl yikes. They did not think that one through I can remember getting in trouble for carrying my purse when the rule in Italy took place. They eventually lightened it so we could carry small bags. No more swipe cards to get in the building. From now on. It's going to be fingerprint sensors. In my high school if you were late for a class they would not let you in the door. They would send you to the tardy center to get a tardy pass. You get so many of those and you were assigned detention or Saturday school. But. While you were going to collect your pass was also the time in which they took attendance. Not being there. You would be marked absent. The attendance was recorded on scantron cards. Placed on a clip outside the classroom. And was picked up early in the period by a member of student government who took it to the office for processing. They would then rectify the attendance records with those of the tardy center and. If you had checked in with the tardy center. Your attendance was counted. So, if you were late to class you might as well not bother going. <laughs>